In 2015, the cargo vessel Bulk Jupiter capsized in the remnants of a tropical storm, most probably due to the liquefaction of her cargo of bauxite. I say probably because the exact cause was left undetermined due to a lack of evidence since the vessel was never recovered. So what is liquefaction and why do I think this was the cause of her loss? Ships like the Bulk Jupiter carry solid bulk cargo which is effectively just piles of cargo loaded directly into a ship's hold. An idealised solid bulk cargo is made up of lots of different sized particles spread evenly throughout the hold. Once loaded, in theory it should just stay in its pile until it's unloaded, but ships are not static, they're actually subject to all sorts of different forces that induce vibrations throughout the hull. Think about the engines, waves hitting the hull and all that sort of stuff. The point is that the hold and the bulk cargo within are subject to vibrations which move all of the particles and allow them to settle, reducing the cargo's volume. Now this isn't actually a problem with bulk cargo because it effectively locks the grains together even tighter and moves the centre of gravity of the cargo downwards, increasing the ship's stability. Remember, a ship's stability is all about the location of her centre of gravity compared to her centre of buoyancy. If the cargo settles, the centre of gravity moves lower, making her more stable. When she subsequently leans over, as long as the cargo stays locked in place, the natural writing force will bring her back upright. So what's the problem? Well, remember this is an idealised scenario. In reality, as well as the cargo itself, there will also be moisture or water present. When we consider the compaction caused by the ship's vibrations, we now also need to consider the water between the cargo particles. In some cases, the cargo will force itself into the places where the water was present, resulting in the water working its way to the top, forming a kind of slurry. Notice also how the larger chunks of cargo have worked their way to the top through the Brazil nut effect. This is known as dynamic separation and we'll talk about its effect in a minute. In other cases, the water is unable to get past cargo particles so it gets trapped and as you can't compress water, its pressure increases. The pressurised water between the cargo particles acts as a kind of lubricant, reducing friction, allowing the cargo to flow freely and effectively behave as if it was a liquid. We call this liquefaction and we say that the moisture in the cargo has caused the solid bulk cargo to liquefy. When we look at the stability of a vessel with liquefied cargo, we see that as she heals over, the bulk cargo behaves as if it were a liquid, flowing to the downhill side. This moves the centre of gravity off the centre line, reducing the writing force generated through the vessel's form stability. It's similar with dynamic separation of course, except rather than the entire cargo flowing from one side to the other, it's only the slurry on top. But underneath that slurry, some of the larger particles will also get washed around, potentially causing them to pile up on one side of the ship. The same process will occur in each of the ship's holds randomly as the slurry sloshes around but eventually you'll reach a point where the sloshing is synchronised and the larger particles get washed to one side simultaneously. A ship experiencing dynamic separation can end up with a serious list with the bulk of the cargo set in position after being sloshed around by the slurry on the surface. With both liquefaction and dynamic separation, bulk carriers experience a dramatic loss of stability and potentially capsize very quickly. As such, neither is a situation you want to find yourself in, so what we do is we keep track of the moisture content in bulk cargoes and maintain strict limits of what is safe to load. With the bulk Jupiter, she was loading bauxite, which has a transportable moisture limit of 10%. Anything below 10% is considered safe and anything above is considered to increase the risk of liquefaction or dynamic separation. Suspiciously, the cargo that she loaded and the cargo that other vessels in the port also loaded all came with documentation stating that its TML was 10% so should be considered safe to load. But it was the rainy season and the cargo was stored outside or being delivered to the ship directly from an open cast mine. Emails from the master to his company stated that the cargo looked wet, but the fact that they didn't conduct further tests and simply continued to load shows that they were not aware of the potential implications of the high moisture content. Interestingly, the exporters did test samples as it was loaded, but that was for their own purposes so they were in no rush to get the results. When they eventually arrived, they proved the master's suspicions to be correct, with an average moisture content of over 20%, well above the 10% limit. Either way, the fact remains that bulk Jupiter probably left her berth loaded with bulk cargo with a moisture content that would significantly increase the risk of liquefaction. Then, on passage, the heavy weather and normal ship vibrations could have caused that moisture to work its way towards the top of the holds and either liquefy the cargo completely or cause dynamic separation, forming a slurry on the surface. 
as she rolled around in the weather, the unstable cargo would have begun to shift, increasing the ship's list until at some point she would have rapidly capsized. The thing is, bulk Jupiter herself is still at the bottom of the ocean, so it's impossible to say for certain what caused her loss. It could have been liquefaction of her cargo due to its high moisture content, or that could simply have been a coincidence and she may have suffered something else like a hatch failure in heavy weather. We'll never know for sure, but the case is a timely reminder of what could happen due to moisture within a bulk cargo.